There are going to be times when you will want to limit what information your users can access and the network objects they can see. One way to do that is with view limitations. View limitations add filters to the SQL queries used to populate the resources in the view. To add a view limitation, you'll click on Customize Page in the upper right corner to go into the View Editor. From here, scroll down toward the bottom of the page to View Limitation. Right now, you can see there are no view limitations, so at this point, the view is going to show everything in the database. To add a limitation, click on Edit. Now you'll choose the limitation type you want to enforce. As you can see, there are a lot of options to choose from. We're not going to go through all of them because they're all pretty straightforward. For this example, we're going to select Single Group and scroll down and click Continue. Now you need to choose which group to limit the view to. Select the Cisco Nodes group here and click Submit. Now back in the View Editor, at the bottom, you can see that a Single Group View limitation is set up, and it is limiting the view to the Cisco Nodes group. So let's preview the view and see what we get. It may take the database a minute to catch up after you make the change, but once it does, you'll see that we are now seeing a lot less in the view than we were a minute ago, because now we won't see anything in this view that's not part of the Cisco Nodes group. So our All Nodes tree just got a lot smaller. Notice there are no entries in Down Nodes. That's not because there are no nodes in the environment that are down, there just aren't any nodes down in the Cisco Nodes group. The last 25 events resource is now only showing the events related to the Cisco Nodes. Even the worldwide map resource has updated. You might have noticed that some of the push pins have disappeared because it's only going to show push pins for nodes that are part of this group. So all of the resources in the view are smart enough to update themselves based on the view limitation. The exception to that, though, is that network atlas maps do not automatically update to match view restrictions. So we've put this view limitation in place to restrict what users can see and where they can go from here but then we've just given them explicit access to information you really didn't want them getting into by adding this network atlas map. So that's something you'll need to pay attention to when dealing with network atlas and restricted views. There will be a lot of times when you will want to include a high-level map in a restricted view. For instance, you might include a WAN map like this that shows all the network hardware and connections that a particular office or application group depends on. You may want the users to be able to see the high-level state of the network, you just don't want them to be able to drill down into the nodes on the map. In the videos on creating and customizing your maps, we show you a couple different ways of dealing with maps so that you can still deploy the high-level map in a restricted view like this and give users information that's relevant to them without them being able to drill down into things that aren't. Network Atlas maps aside, though, setting up and managing your view limitations is very simple, and there are several reasons for using them. One is that they simplify the view for your users. Let's say we add the Active Alerts resource. Without view limitations, we'd be seeing every single alert in the database, and we'd have to go search for alerts on the nodes we're responsible for. But with the view limitation, we only see alerts related to our nodes. They also restrict user access. Your users can't drill down into devices they can't see. And also, they save you time in building views because you can copy your views and just change the view limitation. You may have multiple junior admin groups within your organization, each responsible for different blocks of the network. So you can assign a view limitation for one team, then copy the view and assign a new limitation for the next team. However, do note that view limitations only apply to the current view. If you're really worried about locking down your users, you may need to think about account limitations instead. But in this case, view limitations work just great. Your users can see everything they need to see and nothing else.